to Review and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanjo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. It is time for a new day on the MDS show. Yes, it is. Um, um, ah, yes, yes. Uh, it is time for us to record another hot Oh, okay. Podcast. Yes. And in today, <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. So anyway, in today's episode review, we are going to do Horseplay episode 7 of season 8. In this episode, Twilight Sparkle cast Princess Celestia in her stage play only to discover that Celestia's talent lies elsewhere. <laughs> That's nice to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're putting it mildly there. I know. <laughs> <coughs> so, anywho, let's hit into first impressions with this one. So, Silver, what do you think, man? Oh, how to describe this? It's a fun episode and actually shows Celestia at some of her best moments. But to do so, you have to go through a lot of uncomfortable humor. <laughs> yeah. And I've never been one for that style of humor. I like it when there's, you know, characters are acting goofy. Or when there's a healthy heaping of karma, hence my own videos. <laughs> but watching Celestia just utterly fail at this, it's like, oh my goodness. So in the end, I, I celebrate it. But that first run through, I actually had to watch it in kind of short bursts. Just because I was like, I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> so you're not into the cringe then? Not particularly. All right, all right, all right. Um, as for me, I oh, how to put this? I I I am too not into the cringe, but I think this is what uh, my second watch. Hey, did this episode got leaked? Uh, yes, this was one of the episodes that was that was hacked yeah. and leaked. And you know, we should clarify something mm -hmm. uh, with all the early episode airings uh, in Sweden, France, and Australia. People are saying, "Oh, what's with all these leaked episodes?" Well. Technically, these are not leaks. They are officially airing on their respective channels. In other countries. In other countries. The timing is wrong. Oh, yeah. The mid-production files featuring uh, this episode, that was a leak because it was never intended to see the light of the day in that state. Yeah, and uh, the difference between that and this or what we're talking about leaks. And Okay, when we mentioned leaks... These are rough drafts of episodes that were not meant to be in the public eye. They were only internal between Hasbro Higher Up and DHX. Somewhere in between, it got intercepted and the public got it. And those were really, really rough drafts. Like you, sometimes you had, uh, what you would call this, um, storyboard images being animated, like what they do on the Discovery Channel. Uh, and sometimes you get things that were not done yet, like no sound effect and no um, background music or anything like that. And sometimes they inserted what you would call this um, music. Why, why don't you say that, Silver? Well, it, it, sometimes they just threw in a placeholder song. Yes, thank you. My favorite is uh, Surf and or Turf. They, I think they did Don't You Forget About Me. <laughs> Oh, that was much fun, by the way. Like I, I highly enjoyed it because, hey, I know it's not official, but it at least says that someone working at DHX has good taste in classical music. <laughs> classical? Well, it's not that old. And, well, in terms, it is classic. Apparently, I am. Okay, let's say Evergreen. Classic. Evergreen. You're going to call it oldies next. <laughs> hey, oldies is what my mom and dad listen to. What's that? This is why we need Sapphire here, so she can call me an old man and just make me feel worse. Oh, yeah. By the way, I uh, just at home. If you're wondering what happened to Sapphire, she betrayed us. She did not come on the show. She, We were supposed to do something today, but nah, she, she betrayed us. Only thing we can do now is wait for her to come, if she comes. Uh, but yeah, uh, on to my thoughts on this episode. Yeah. Uh, I I I, <laughs> I watch this episode. I like it. I like the Giddy Celestia. I do like her personality, and it comes across to me like is she acting this whole time like trying to teach Twilight a lesson? 
because it feels that way. <laughs> I mean, it really, really feels that way. Uh, but yeah, uh, the hmm, how do I put this? You you remember what you always mention, Silver? For them to push a character, they need to dumb down a character. It's been it's been the flaw in several stories, I think. Yeah. And this one seems to be that too, to a certain extent, with uh, Twilight. Well, we'll get into this with the episode review proper. Mm-hmm. But anywho, but anywho, if you guys at home have not watched this yet, pause here. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that episode because here's our thoughts on it. <coughs> so we first start off the episode with uh, Twilight visiting Celestia in her... Is that a castle or is that the school? Does it look like a castle? It's the brand new castle. They updated it to match the movie. And so now it's a throne room with two thrones. One for Celestia, one for Luna. Luna's apparently taking a powder. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And yeah, I like it. I it, I mean, it's more pristine than the old one. Somehow the abundance of white and grays uh, just looks more pure. All right, but it's just that um, I'm just looking at the external view of the castle and it's throwing me off because in my mind, Cantalot is the high, tall building out in the sky and whatnot. I was like, okay. Uh, but anywho, uh, that doesn't really matter because um, Twilight is visiting Celestia and uh, telling her about her plans to do a play for her onesies. Oh. Onesversary. Yep. And that is the what? Uh, one thousand one hundred and whoa, what was it in the toilet? But yeah, it's her first time that Celestia raised the sun, which is a really historical event. Yes, it's so historical that no one remembers it, including Celestia. Oh no! Which makes me wonder: How did Pinky find all this out? First rule about Pinky: You don't ask. I will ask whatever I die well, please. Oh, you're gonna Bleh. go insane, then, my friend. But anywho. Bleh. Twilight mentions that, hey, uh, to celebrate your onesies, we are going to um, host a play about your historical event. And Celestia here is just giddy with joy. She's prancing. She's just hopping around. She's just doing the loop-de-loops. And <laughs> and Spike just says, uh, did Celestia just prance? <laughs> I'm sorry, Norman, but right now all I can think of is when you said Celestia and her onesies, that you were talking about like a swimsuit edition. Oh. <laughs> oh, you were thinking that. I was thinking of a Kigurumi. Really, Norman? What? How could you? Did you? Mm-mm. You cheeky monkey. Okay, okay you know what? I, I'm going to say it right now because uh, brains are going all over the place. But yes, uh, Celestia mentions that she's always been into the theater life. Like she wants to participate. She always wanted to participate, but didn't have the chance to because, well, she's super busy. Hearing that, Twilight Sparkle just mentions that, Yo, Celestia, why don't you become the lead actress in our play? And Spike goes, Lay what? And the funny thing is that, surprise Celestia, I think Nicole Oliver also voices uh, Muria Mule. Uh-huh, yeah, I think so. Or no, it's, it's Matilda. Yeah, Matilda, yes. Matilda Mule. And they sound very similar when they're surprised. Run like a clip of Celestia going, you want me to play, star in your play? <laughs> and then uh, Matilda going, they they scheduled the wedding today. <laughs> they sound very, very similar. Well, um, sometimes like, you know, I'm not going to comment on that. But hey, uh, if it does, that's, well, awesome, I guess. No, it's, just, it's just something I noticed. It's not a bad thing. It's just awareness. Yeah. Norman, Yo. be aware. All right. Seffy. Be aware. She's not here. Steffi? Well, work on that. <laughs> so, anywho, um, Twilight pulls Spike along and just mentions that Celestia always wanted to do this and we should do this for her because she's been there for us for a long time and I just want to do something nice for her. And, yeah, Celestia just pops in and says, Twilight, you don't really need to. I'm happy that you thought about me, but I just feel bad if stuff and Twilight just says no problem you'll be fine you're a great actress then yeah this is gonna be great and Spike just says yeah whatever she says and Celestia is just happy about it and yay we're gonna get the best actress 
Yay! Who better to play Celestia than Celestia, right? Self-insert fanfic. Yep. So, anywho, we get to see the other main six getting the stage ready by <laughs> Pinkie Pie throwing confetti and Applejack is scolding Pinkie Pie for it. Um, Starlight commenting on Fluttershy's stage fright passing over and whatnot. <laughs> She compliments Fluttershy's uh, re- rehearsing of the line. Uh, she had it memorized right away. Hmm. Most, mostly because Fluttershy is still working on crippling uh, stage fright. And yet, it's telling that she's the only one who gets cast as Celestia again. Because she played Celestia. If there was a Luna, Rarity would be playing Luna. No? Yes? Well, one could hope. I mean, truly... Only Fluttershy has the grace to match Celestia, and Rarity has the dramatic voice to match Luna and the royal Canterlot voice. True that, true that. But anywho, uh, putting that aside, we get to see, well, Twilight coming, and everybody is hoping that there's good news. And there is. And said good news is, Celestia will be the lead actress for the play. And everybody's going, what? <laughs> yeah, everybody starts freaking out. It is funny. Applejack's the only one keeping a level head in all this. Yeah, because Applejack sees Celestia as a friend, while the rest still sees her as royalty. I'm not 100% sure about um, Starlight and Fluttershy, though, but Rainbow Dash is overhyped and wants to tell the whole world about it. And Rarity is jumping her designs up to 11, while Pinkie Pie's is putting her uh, best hoof forward in the wrong way. So, yeah. Yeah. This isn't going to go well. And Starlight, I think she is freaking out a little because she gets the... She talks about, you know, hanging out with a royalty. <laughs> and then she puts in probably one of the biggest disses at Twilight. <laughs> like, I know. Oh, no, she did it. I know. And then this is, um, like, just imagine... Being around royalty, uh, blowing your nose, eating and whatnot. And Twilight just mentions, you do that around me. Yeah, I mean, you're a princess, but not a princess princess. Like, yo! Oh! (laughs) Bodhi got dissed! I almost want to see an alicorn starlight now, just so she can can have people diss her that way. It's like, yeah, you're not really a princess princess. Oh, wow. Where's your bling? Yo... But anywho, Applejack says, nonsense, y'all. Uh, Celestia's like a friend to us, and we should treat her uh, like one. Isn't that right, Twilight? Yeah. So anywho, um, Celestia is around, and they practice and they practice their first re- uh, dress rehearsal. And yay, we get to see the uh, student six doing their thing. Like It seems like all of the six students are participating, and we get a bit of backstory to the world's lore and that is uh, before Celestia came Starsoul the Bearded and his other five unicorn buddies had to use their magics to raise the sun and it took a lot out of them that the other five lost their magical powers which was briefly talked about in the Journal of Two Sisters uh, book which some elements have rendered that book moot but I'm glad they, they resurrected this idea Although, how many days was it before Celestia took over? Because that's a lot of magic users. What is it? Assuming a seven-day week, that's what, 30, 35 unicorns down per week? Uh, not really. If depended on how many unicorns last. Okay, let's just say on average, uh, a unicorn could last for seven days. So it takes like, what, uh, five, my, you know, I'm not good at math, but... That's my head cannon on this theory. I'm crunching the numbers right now. So I'm going to say it takes five unicorns per raising plus star swirl. So five unicorns times seven days a week mm-hmm. times, let's say, four weeks in a month. All right. Times 12 weeks in a hu- 12 months in a human year. That's 1,680 unicorns depowered within the span of a year. Wow. That is bad. Like... I, I don't know if they have the population to keep this going. Yeah, maybe maybe it's um, revisionist history on this one, probably. All I know is that uh, this is some Warhammer 40k logic. 
Yeah. Yes, we must sacrifice a thousand ponies to the to the golden emperor. Oh no. Arr. But any, but any who uh, Space Fantasy. <laughs> but Why am I sounded like a pirate? Yeah. But anywho, um the story goes along and it is mentioned that Celestia, a talented student of Star Swirl, has the power to raise the sun without losing her powers. And we get to see Celestia walking up on stage and speaking her line. Very quietly. Yep. And, oh my goodness. Like, this here is a twist that nobody expected at all. (laughs) So before we carry on here, Silver, I I need to ask, what were you expecting here? Like, were you expecting this uh, plot twist? Or were you expecting that the... Um, talent or the praise is going through her head kind of storyline. I think the summary did say that Celestia wasn't a good actress. Did she? No, I I read it and it didn't say that. Oh, in truth, I don't remember what I was expecting. I don't think I would expect anything to go to Celestia's head. Uh, a royal problem was was did feature an element of pride. But usually Celestia doesn't get a swelled ego about her own achievements. Hmm. Probably because, you know, the latest kidnapping pro- helps keep that in check. <laughs> yep. But, wow. I mean, wow. You did not expect this one. <laughs> no, I don't think anyone could fully expect her to be this bad an actress. Yep, yep. And you know what? I, I have to be honest with my opinion on this, and I was not expecting this. And mind you, I watched the spoiler first. And yeah, I, I was not expecting this level of bad. And in my mind, I knew that Nicole Oliver was enjoying this a lot. Okay, now Nicole, can you say that with even less <laughs> conviction, less passion? <laughs> it is time for a new day in Equestria. How, how many times uh, are you going to get paid for acting bad, right? Like, purposely. That's how was so. Purposely. Purposely. You can't convince me he wasn't a troll back then, too. And yet, there is the question of, does is Celestia turning this into an education as she pranks Twilight? I know, that's the thing. Because we all know Celestia is a... Well, she has experience. She's a thousand plus years old, and she knows a few things about life and whatnot. But this year's stage play, I don't know, man. Like, you know what? Uh, we... We talk about it near the end, but for now, uh, Celesta is bad at acting. So, yeah. Oh my goodness. First she's too soft, then she's too loud, and then, yeah. Uh. Oh, but come on. Royal Cantalot voice. Who hasn't been wanting to see Celestia use that? <laughs> True that. We've we seen um, Luna. Luna's obvious. We've seen Twilight do it. Did we see Cadence do it? No, Cadence has never done it, and Twilight used a vocal enhancement spell, which I consider to be cheating. Oh, okay. Cheater. But anywho. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> Celestia did the voice. And yeah, everybody's looking at her wanting to say something or just looking at her awkwardly. And Twana just says, Yay! You're great! You're, you're really great! Uh, yeah! And Celestia's happy about it. Applejack is the first to bat and says, uh, Princess, you're... Before she could say anything, Twilight shuts her up. Hoof gag by Twilight. Yep, yep. And yeah, um, we go to the next scene, and the next scene is dancing. Um, At least Celestia can dance, yes? Oh, we can dance, we can dance, everybody join in the dance. So yeah. Or let's save the dance (laughs) from Celestia, because even then she she looks just so out of place. I know. Out of sync. And I gotta say, Twilight was praising her own writing for this. And just like, okay, Twilight, don't don't quit your day job. Yep, yep. That's all I'm going to say. Don't quit your day job. Yep. Uh, but yeah, the dancing is not bad, bad. I mean, uh, just imagine going in blind, totally blind, not knowing anything. That's what you get for watching spoilers. And looking at the creatures up on stage and you're wondering like, what the hey am I watching? This is madness. Yep. Madness incarnate. But anywho, yeah, um, Celestia says a line. Um, 
don't be a stick in the mud. I don't really remember. It's been... Come on, Star Swirl, take off that dusty hat. Yeah. So, yeah, and with that, uh, Celestia has a good shot and hook it to the uh, secret floor of, what was it? Trap door, yes, the trap door. And... Or the sun. Yep. And the creatures all fall down and broke the sun or the crystal ball in this case. Yes. So, yeah, the prop for the sun is broken. Oh, no, that's not good. And backstage, all the main six plus Spike and Starlight starts to panic a bit. Oh, uh, yeah. And they're discussing, okay, um, so that's just bad. What, what do we do? What do we do? We can't... Uh, we, we need to change the lead actress. No, we can't do that. Uh, Celestia will get hurt. Uh, Celestia's feeling will get hurt and whatnot. And Alpha Jack comes in and says, you know what? We should tell her the truth. And st- and Twilight just dismiss her and look for other ideas. And one of the ideas is to cancel the play. Because nobody knows, right? So nobody knows that means nobody's expecting anything. So if we cancel the play, no play will be around, right? Good plan, right? Yes, yes, yes. Good plan, but then no one accounts for Rainbow Dash. Yep. You know what? This uh, Rainbow. I I should get Rainbow Dash to market the podcast because by her telling people that the podcast is awesome, and they tell their other friends, and then like, yeah, that's good, man. Like, we need Rainbow Dash as our uh, hype girl. As our hype girl who basically dashes any hope. <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, by Rainbow Dash telling everyone. Uh, the play is going to continue on. Yes. So, yeah, they, they, they have a plan. They have a plan. And said plan is for Twilight to get Celestia acting lessons, but not really seeing their acting lessons. And oh my god. <laughs> this a is... Workshop. Yep. This is just... Uh, Celestia, dear... You're awesome, and I, I'm just thinking that you're trolling to the max. This court would be so proud. Well, all I know is we get we get uh, names for two of the Method Mayor actor and actress. I especially love that one of them is Raspberry Beret. <laughs> the kind you buy in a second-hand store. But I, I just like, you know, normally I have a compulsion to punch these ponies for how pretentious they sound. Mm-hmm. Not this time, because they're about to get their comeuppance a different way. But they're just doing what they do. Stage play actors. Like, it's not wrong. Okay, would you hear how fake their, that French accent is? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's, they're, they're in character. So, yeah. But... Oh, in character, he says. You know, you can, you can want to punch a character in the face for being in character. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> uh, but, but anywho, but anywho. Uh, we go back to the stage and the disco ball, it's broke beyond repair. And Pinkie Pie says, no problem, I, I got this, I got this. And yay, it's a big giant balloon. And it's a good uh, substitute for the prop. And yeah, no, it was a good substitute for a prop, yes. Because it seems that the stage that they're on has the leg tights. And it popped the balloon, Yes. Who builds a theater with stalag- uh, stalactites? You know, I'm just wondering, where is this? Is it belief the school or something like that? And yeah, I'm not going to question it. Uh, so Twilight teleports back to the school and checking Celeste's progress. And oh my god, she's terrible. She she don't know how to do improv. She just Let's just say that Celestia does not know how to act. And the, the despair on the method mares. Yep. Is- palpable mm, that's some good despair oh waiter can i get a to-go cut bag <laughs> yeah and we get back on stage and we get to see pinky's alternate plan for a sun and alternate plan is a giant marshmallow that's on fire and makes everything else on fire it's the perfect plan yep and it seems that only applejack is the sensible one here yes so uh you know what i'm gonna rush through a bit here uh, Twilight teleports back to the school and sees that no progress has been done and the method mares or the po- acting ponies are at a loss because Celestia can act. Not at all. So anywho, we are transported to opening night. And oh my goodness, opening night is awesome. We get to see 
um, Luna coming in and sitting next to Fertilise and Fancy Pants and some other ponies in the background. And yeah, Twilight is panicking because we don't have a son for the play and whatnot and our lead actress is terrible and whatnot. And it seems that Pinkie Pie bought some magical fireworks in a back alley at midnight from Trixie. What could go wrong, right? One does question what Trixie was doing in that alley at midnight with those goods for sale. Yo, Trixie's got it all right here, man. The first rocket is free, but then you gotta pay for the rest. Oh, no, 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 no. So, Candy Mare. <laughs> so, anywho, uh, at this point, Twilight Sparkle blows a fuse. Now, to be honest, it's been a while since we've gotten to see a proper Twilight freakout. I have missed them. I have missed them so much. And this is a proper freakout because she lets it all out, let it all go, because she's frustrated to no end. And in her frustration, we get to see Celestia standing behind her, looking dejected. And yeah, let's just say that she heard the whole thing and she is hurt by what Twilight said. And yeah, before Twilight could chase after her, Pinkie Pie stops her and says, you can't leave the play. What about the play? And Twilight just says, no, I I need to do this. I need to do this. And runs off to console Celestia. But Spike is once again made the sacrificial dragon. I mean, the fact that rare... Oh, wait, you said it now. No, I wanted to say... I wanted to say something, but I didn't want to interrupt you. You said oosh. No, because I wanted to say... Now, you know what? Uh, I didn't want to interrupt you, so yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. It's still, it's still as close to an oaf as we can get without Safi here. But it, it just the fact that they are willing to throw Spike out there to a, to an impatient crowd, I just like, well, back the bus up over him, why don't you? <laughs> oh yeah, uh, but Spike was the one that opened his mouth because he says that yo, the audience are savages. No pony should be out there. And every pony looks at Spike. And Spike gets the message. Hi! Me and my big dragon mouth. Well, that's just it. They won't respect him as a dragon until it actually suits them. No pony can do it, then we'll send no dragon. Yep. While Spike is calming the crowd. You know what? What's wrong with this? Like, why not have Pinkie Pie and Spike do something? Because we know that Pinkie Pie and Spike can perform... We got that in Appaloosa, right? So, yeah, right? Because apparently betrayal, thy name is rarity. <laughs> yeah. And yet Spike will still pursue her, knowing that she used him for her own whims. <laughs> I just, the disparity ship, oh, it's taking a direct hit, taking on water, <laughs> falling, sinking. Ah, oh, the pain, the tragedy. You sunk my battleship. <laughs> you sunk my shippy ship. Yeah. So, anywho... Um, Twilight Sparkle catches up to Celestia and says that she's sorry. She didn't mean for that to happen. All she wanted to do was make Celestia's wish come true, which is to be part of the play. And Celestia says, okay, I, you didn't mean to do it, but you know you should have just mentioned the truth. And being truthful is part of being a good friend. Didn't Applejack tell you that? <laughs> Only a couple million times. But there are a few things I really like uh, about what Cele- how Celestia is presented, even in her anger. The first is she's very clear about why she's angry. Not a lot of people can do that. I think we're all tempted to be passive-aggressive and just say, well, they if they don't know what they did, I'm not going to tell them. Mm-hmm. Celestia is not that, mm, I don't want to say petty, but definitely she wants to be clear about her own emotions. And secondly, there's the there, there's her answer of you had good intentions, which you know road to hell and all that. Uh-huh, true that, true that. But there's a a book I read, How We Go to War, and it's by a Vietnam veteran who was trying to reconcile his feelings after the uh, well the war itself, and he got to talk to uh, Carl Jung, of all people. Oh my, and Jung said well did you go into that war intending to wipe out their entire civilization no do you think they had the intention of wiping out every american in existence no and then jung makes sort of a, a 
wiping of his hands gesture. Well then, whoo. And this was actually a very good brief psychiatric help because it, it made him realize, hey, intentions can't save us from a mistake and they can't save us from ourselves, but they are a huge part of what comes next. Case in point, uh, Twilight lies to Celestia because she doesn't want to hurt her friend's feelings. And she realizes that's a mistake. But juxtapose that against, say, Jet Set and Upper Crust. They lied to the princess to get in good and improve their social standing. Do you think they're going to learn the same lesson as Twilight? No. It's, it's a totally different perspective then. Also, a totally different intention. True, true. So... That's just, that's something, when people say intentions don't matter, only action, I don't agree with that. There's cause and effect, and if the intention doesn't really matter, what does that solve? Like, you know what, this is a debate for another day, because, yeah, reasons. Uh, So, let's get back on track, by the way. I am on track. I am always on track. I'm just not going to the same station as you. (laughs) (laughs) Ha ha! All right, so anyway, um... Celestia forgives Twilight for, you know, deceiving her. And like they say, the show must go on. And they go back to the stage. And talking about the stage, we get to see Spike running away from free food. Yay. Well, at least the old boy is seeing the optimistic side. Indeed, indeed. So Always look on the bright side of life. I can't whistle this song. Uh, yeah, the life of Brian. Oh, that's a good one. But anywho, um, every pony panics until Celestia comes on, and they kind of talk about uh, um how are you gonna do this? Our lead actress is bad, and what? How 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 do you do this? And in an instant, this was the role that Celestia was meant to play or meant to do in the theater. Be the director. This was meant for her. And, yeah, being involved in disaster is kind of her deal. And she instructs the pony, like, um, Rainbow Dash, go get Cloud for the backdrop. Uh, Starlight, go get me the script. And Fluttershy, you will be the new star. You can do this. Now, get in character. Go get makeup and stuff. Go, 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 go. And Spike, you are the narrator. Yes. Try not to have food flung at you again. Yeah. So, anywho, the play starts. And, yeah, uh, the play starts like per rehearse. You get to see the creatures come out on stage, sing their lines. And, oh no, there's the dreaded heckler. Oh no. Right next to Princess Luna. You'd think that would earn a magical zap or some such. Oh no, Luna is joining in the fun because she's laughing at it. <laughs> uh, I think so. I think Luna is just having revenge because, oh, have a play about your sister shoot, shall we? Huh, I am going to heckle them as hard as I can. <laughs> heckle, heckle, heckle. <laughs> heckle and hide. Heckle, jekyll. So, anywho, the unicorns or the ponies or the creatures on stage look terrible. And yeah, Celestia tells Spike to improvise. And he does. Saying that, huh, you think that's bad? You should look at them, like, raising the sun and moon. Like, raising the sun all day? That's got to be the beat, like, blah, 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 and stuff. So, anywho, uh, Fluttershy comes on stage, says the line, and yes, I shall raise the sun. Problem is, there's no sun. And Celestia just says to Fluttershy, just do the pose, I'll do the rest. And Celestia raises the sun. And <laughs> I just uh, I just love the look on Luna's face on this one. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, what 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 is the time? I mean, this might count as an intrusion. Oh, it is on the night. It is. And, I just, and I'm just like I'm thinking back to the movie. It's like you want us to change the sun and the moon for your friendship festival, Twilight. Well, oh well, this is for my uh, my story, so I have no trouble. Playing with the heavens now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I see uh, how it is. I just love uh, Luna's face here. She is pissed off. Double standards. 
Yep. Oh, uh, yep, yep, yep. Uh, look at her face. Uh, everybody else is like in ooh and us. Celeste, uh, Luna is just like, <laughs> Oh, why'd you do that, sister? why you do that? Yep, yep. Uh, so, anywho, <coughs> as the play continues on, uh, we get to the final scene. And yay, curtains drop and flowers were tossed. And yeah, in, in the end, Celestia just says that that was amazing. I, I totally love that because I want to be part of the play, but not the lead. I, I just want to be around. If I have to be the pony to get coffee for everyone, I'm happy to do so. Just being a thespian of the arts, I'm happy to do so. And yeah, everybody's happy about it. And yay! And with that declaration, Celestia says that you know what? Being in the theater taught me one thing that, and that is, I love doing this. And you know what, Twilight Sparkle? I am going to quit my job as a princess and go full time as a theater pony. Yes! And everybody's like, ending in the best gotcha moment. <laughs> yes, yes. Although, let's be honest, there are some critics out there who would say, Yes, Celestia, resign! Yeah, me, me. <laughs> no. Uh, but, no. But anywho, but anywho. Uh, everybody has a good laugh, and the episode ends. Yay. Well, there's two things we kind of left out. Mm -hmm. The first is Celestia jokes, Maybe I'm not such a bad actress after all. And it's like, yep, she's at her element in, when trolling. Yep. This, this is, wow, well. Okay, uh, episode and, and let's go to our, well, discussion soon because there's a lot to discuss about this one. And, oh, wow, C Celestia here. I don't know what to think, man. Like, she's been around for a thousand years and you would think that she's good at putting up a face because of all the politics that she needs to do in the Cantalot and other creatures, right? But here... She could be strolling, man. There's a huge possibility. Probably. But actually, there's one very telling line, hmm. I think, that reconciles this. Because I, I don't think Celestia would intentionally sabotage a play just to teach Twilight a lesson. Granted, th this is the same mayor who said, I'm giving you a test. Save this uh, Crystal Empire following a very specific set of rules. So take from that what you will. But there's one line in this that I think really sums up Celestia. When she's when she's trying to visualize with Fluttershy, Equestria needs you. And Equestria needs Celestia to be uh, a ruler to nurture and help other ponies grow. It does not need her to be a great actress. And so I think you could make the argument that because this is all make-believe, to Celestia, it's not half as real as what she's had to uh, what she's had to experience and counter in real life, and that might be why she's not a great actress, and yet she can fake it if she's trying to, you know, impart a lesson. Hmm. All right. And at the same time, too, I remember uh, the premiere for season eight, where the creatures all gather in the Cantalot Castle to talk about their missing kids and whatnot. And Celestia's saying, I'll hold them off. Go find the kids. Yeah, because that was the role for which she was needed. Mm. And, okay, um, I have to ask, like, being a good actor and being a, well, a decent person who knows how to play a role or whatnot like let's just say that you have to fill in time f so your friend could do something are two totally different things because how do i want to put this silver you want to go first to bat for this one I, I think you know what i mean right that basically being a good politician who can keep a straight face and go with the flow while also keeping control of the situation is very different from taking on a, an alternate personality or stepping into the shoes of a fictional character. Mm -hmm. uh, it's actually very much like uh, what Fluttershy's friends did in Fluttershy Leans In. They just assume 
that if you do one thing well, you can do something else well. And no, people have a diverse skill set. And it can sometimes mean there isn't as much of a crossover as you might expect. Yeah, true that, true that. And being good at one thing doesn't mean you're good at another, even though the things are similar. Uh, I'm going to go nerdy in my mindset because, okay, um, being good at Magic the Gathering doesn't mean that you're good at Yu-Gi-Oh! or even uh, what's the newest hotness right now? Yeah, Cardfight Vanguard. They're two totally different, or those three are totally different card games, and they have totally different rules. Even though their their rule cross over, but it doesn't really mean that they're the same. So you need to relearn everything again. And here with Celestia, okay, granted that she's over a thousand years old, and acting should be one of them, but given her situation. She didn't really have the time to get up on stage and perform the butterfly dance or whatever it is that they do up on stage. Oh, Romeo, Romeo, whatever it is. Romeo, Romeo, what the hey there, Romeo? <laughs> no comment, that one. Uh, wasn't really into the Shakespeare's. Uh, but I don't know. To me, Celestia here could be a troll, but after hearing your explanation, Silver, I can dig it. Hey, thrill me, Norman. Hey. Yes. So, anywho, let's go to final thoughts. Let's go to final thoughts. Silver. Well, like I say, first time viewing this, I had to go in spurts because the bad acting was just like, oh, why do they make this character so awkward? Because <laughs> I do. There's a reason I, I make the reason I make fun of Celestia in my videos is because one of the one of the surest uh, signs to humor is to offend dignity. And none are more regal and dignified than Celestia. True, true. But that does not mean I dislike her character. She was just a victim of my machinations. <laughs> <laughs> so seeing her act this badly, I actually feel ashamed for her. In fact, I believe there's a term for that. Let's see here. I'll do a search for you, share your thoughts. But All right. it was at the end when Celestia took leadership and you realize this is her strength. This is what she probably does on a daily basis. True that, true get, that. Get through a crisis and improvise. Mm -hmm. So, ironic, I think this episode shows her at her best and her worst. I think it's a it's the first time in a while we've gotten to see Twilight be a full character with even vulnerabilities. Yeah, it's been a while since we've seen vulnerable Twilight. So, as for me, I like this episode. We, we get to see more of Celestia, which we have been asking for. And we get to see more adorable Twilight and whatnot. And yeah, uh, more world lore and whatnot. And in all honesty, it's all about Celestia in this episode. We, we get to see her act in a non-regal way. Like, you know, just trying to do stuff. And <laughs> it's just reading in between the lines. Like, Celestia mentions that, oh, I would love to participate or i would like to be part of the play and whatnot and when you say that you're thinking oh i want to roll on the show or in the play but now nah, celestia just wants to be a gopher a director a uh, stagehand or whatever they call it so yeah she just wants to be that never be in the limelight i mean she always she has that as a day job and honestly i don't mind seeing her i'm sorry i, I can see her play or go to a local theater, just being a director and whatnot. Like, she's good at that. And yeah, um, Applejack is best pony because she knows what to do from the very start. <laughs> Silver, you found that word? Well, see, I found two different terms. In, in English, we simply use the term vicarious shame. Ah, yes, that's a word I remember, yes. But I think it's more cultured to use the Spanish version. And I'm going to butcher this, but I'll do my best. Veruenza ajena. <laughs> I, like, I like the English version better. Vicariously, yes. I don't know. We'll just have to call up someone like James and have him correct me on it. <laughs> Veruenza ajena. You're like, no, why are you doing this to my language, Silver? <laughs> <laughs> but still, must. <laughs> but still. No, no comment on that one, my friend. So, anywho, yeah, th this episode is just awesome. Like, I, I highly like it. I highly enjoy it. And I highly. Recommend people go watch it again. And, uh, well, 
if I were to say for my top 10 of season 8, this would be around in the top 10s. I'm not sure where, but it is there. Well, we haven't. We can't really do a top 10 yet. We're only in the mid teens. Uh, true, but it's one of those scenarios where I like it because it's a fun episode. Like, it, it fulfills that fun factor for me where I get to see uh, Celestia and she's acting silly and whatnot. And I just remember something that I wanted to say. Nicole Oliver had a lot of fun delivering her lines on this one. Like, she's saying bad lines and whatever it is. Like, that has to be fun. Like, an actor playing a role where you get to be bad, that's fun. That is really fun. And you can hear it in the delivery. So, I I like it. Oh, as to, as do I. She did a fantastic job. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think I like her Royal Cantalot voice more than her quiet Fluttershy voice, <laughs> but... Anywho, Silver, what are we going to do next week? Well, it's the end of the world as we know it, and I feel fine. Mm. We're going to have a little discussion about how everyone's saying the fandom is dying, or this is the end, my January friend. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Even though it's August. Yeah. Uh, when this episode comes out, it's going to be, going to be September. Probably. I'm not 100% sure. <clears throat> but still, yes, uh, in next week's uh, podcast we are going to do a discussion podcast we haven't done that in a while and said discussion is why do fans seem obsessed with things ending so yeah that is the patreon sponsored and yeah and that will be next week's thing so anywho if you have any questions concerns or suggestions for the show you can do so at com. you can also reach us on the twitters the show's twitter account is at the MBS show my personal twitter account is at norman sanzo silver where can the good people find you well, you can find me on YouTube. Just do a search for Silver Quill or After the Fact, and I usually pop up near the top. Uh, you can find me on DeviantArt, MLP, hyphen Silver, hyphen Quill, where I have my Pinkie Pie Says Goodnight comics, uh, and every now and again a tale about my other OC clutter step. And uh, every Wednesday I post on EquestriaDaily.com uh, with a comic review or editorial. Nice, nice. I've seen them all, and it's really fun. And the comic review and editorial on the QDs is fun too. It reminds me that, hey, a comic is out. Go go, go buy it. <laughs> yes, go forth and buy the comics. Yes, indeed. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyvaLive.com. Links are in the show notes. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this. This episode that you're listening now on the iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Over there, you catch myself, Silver Quill, sometimes Sapphire, if she's around to be catched, doing Pony episode, uh, comic review, movie review, and sometimes we like to talk about other things. The latest non-Pony thing that we did was The Princess Bride. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, still, it wasn't as quotable as uh, Kung Pao. That that broke me. Kung Pao broke me. Wee-oo. <laughs> ah! See? Oh, it still breaks me. Wow. Okay, anywho, uh, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com. With every support, you'll get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I'd like to thank Lurker Cat, my stuff like Tristan, Charles, Starstream, Lucky Knight, and also Amy. Thank you guys for being awesome and stay awesome. So, anywho, my name is Norman Sanzo. I am Zizir Vrakwil. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MES Show. See ya. Adios. Oh, yay. The episode has ended. Hurrah. We are free now. I am filled with elation. What, what did she say so I couldn't hear you? Um, I said I am filled with elation. Oh, yes. Much celebration. Yay. Yay. The end. What? What? Oh, I wasn't supposed to read that. Okay.